Jumping right into our first question of the day, um, Ardik from Greece says, can one exercise different parts of their brain in a similar way to exercising muscles? How far does this analogy go? Can someone improve their decision-making skills by exercising their prefrontal cortex? Good. Great question. Um, okay. Cliche in the field used to be by the time you're three years old, you've got all your neurons, you've got all your connections, the brain is set in stone. And that turns out to be gibberish. And the brain changes throughout your whole life. And it's constantly changing neural plasticity. And people know a ton by now about the mechanisms. Uh, you got two neurons that talk to each other across a synapse. How is it that this connection can become more excitable under some circumstances? How can neurons grow new connections, new cables? How can you get new neurons born entirely in the adult brain? And we know a lot about how that works by now and how that's a mechanism for learning to go on. And one of the themes that comes through that is this notion of activity-dependent plasticity. When you use a neuron a lot, that's when it changes. That's when it shows itself to be plastic. When you use a synaptic connection a lot, jargon in the field, what was it? Families that pray together, stay together. Uh, neurons that fire together, wire together. When neurons are first coming together, the ones who do a lot of form stable cables. So the notion is activity exercising particular parts of the brain will make that part of the brain function differently and hopefully better. <clears throat> so the question here is, can you do it to individual parts of the brain? You can enhance your memory. Part of the brain, the hippocampus, some related structures, you enhance it every time you go and like after a lecture, you study the notes afterward. You remember it better. Or you can have a higher order version of that. You can learn to learn more efficiently and just sort of meta level stuff like that. You can enhance the function of some of your sensory systems. For example, like auditory cortex, which is processing sound. It's predominantly on the left side around here. So you get someone who spends the summer learning a musical instrument and by the end of the summer, more of their auditory cor cortex is devoted to processing, not music, but the sound of that musical instrument, that specialization. <coughs> so that would be an example. You've exercised that part of your auditory cortex. Then the study, I totally love this one in terms of like what volunteers are willing to do. They got a bunch of people to learn like a five note little exercise thing on a piano and they convinced these these martyrs to scientific progress to do this over and over and over for a couple of hours a day for weeks months i don't know what and they showed afterward that their brain their sensory motor cortex had completely remapped to being more attuned to the dexterous motor action to this. Then, just when you thought that couldn't be topped, they got some even crazier volunteers who learned the same finger exercise. And then they would spend hours every day thinking about doing it and thinking about doing it, imagining it. And by the end of that time, they had remapped that part of their motor cortex as well. So the question becomes, can you do that with your part of the brain that's got to do with decision making and making prudent ones instead of impulsive ones, which is all about the frontal cortex. Frontal cortex, greatest part of the brain. We talked about it endlessly. It makes you do the hard thing when that's the right thing to do. That's fantastic. How do you make the frontal cortex stronger at what it does? And like, in a sense, we're doing that every time we're on a diet and we're looking at the whatevers and we're trying not to have something. You're trying to figure out techniques or don't look at it. Distract yourself. Think about your coronary blood vessels blocking up whatever it is. Do the exercises needed to make your prefrontal cortex better at resisting this temptation so that, you know, eventually you could just be in a bathtub full of M&Ms and not 
indulge or anything, um, but other versions of that as well. How do you train your prefrontal cortex to get you to do the right thing, for example, not to steal something? And what you see is there's gradations, Kohlberg stages of moral development, which is basically asking your prefrontal cortex to do something fancier and fancier. Don't steal something because you're going to get caught. To don't steal something because there's laws against it. To, oh my God, if what if everyone did that? To, this is just intrinsically something wrong. You're getting a stronger prefrontal cortex in each of those cases. How about decision making? How do you make your prefrontal cortex stronger in that regard? Somebody asks you, so what should be the solution to this? What do we do? And you want to have some sort of buffer against the notion of just making some impulsive decision. Here's an exercise you can do. Stop at that point just when you were about to announce your decision and go through this frontal exercise. What would be the strongest argument of somebody who disagrees with me on this? And do perspective taking with that or a more emotive version of that you were just about to form a judgment about someone in perhaps a very negative way. And hold on a second there with your now strengthened frontal cortex. Think through how they wind up that way. How are they looking at the world differently from me? All of that. So lots of these great techniques for making your prefrontal cortex stronger and less impulsive and more self-discipline than that. But then something totally cool happens in that after a while, you do this enough and you don't even need your prefrontal cortex. And this was this fantastic study. I may very well have cited this before because it's one of my favorites. Josh Green from Harvard. This clever experimental design where people had an opportunity to cheat repeatedly in some game and they would get a reward for it. And there was a way to detect if people cheated. And you could see it, what was going on in their prefrontal cortex when these people had the opportunity to cheat and the ones who did cheat and the prefrontal cortex activated like crazy. Should I do it? Should I not? And wrestling all of that. And then looking at the people who never, ever cheated. And were these people who had trained their prefrontal cortex so much that it could just wrestle down Satan and there overcome that temptation? Or did it have nothing to do with the prefrontal cortex by then? It had become automatic. It's not a temptation. You just don't do that. Doing the right thing isn't the harder thing because it's become automatic by then. So by the time you're trying to train your prefrontal cortex to do a better job, when you've really trained it, the greatest thing is after a while, it becomes automatic.